We're here with Rafat Ali of uh, Paid Content and the Growing Empire uh, that's expanding uh, incredibly with uh, great content and a great staff. And uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. This is my, I think, second time. It is, it is. So tell us, uh, you guys are really growing. Give us an idea of sort of the scope of the business now and uh, employees and your operations and conferences and publications. Yeah, I mean, last time we talked was about a year ago when we just got our funding. And at that point, we were about five people, five or six people. So we're 18 people now. So we've grown a lot just in terms of the number of people we, we have brought in. I mean, we're literally hiring a new person every two, three weeks. And um, we've expanded from the paid content is the main website. Then there's Moco News, which covers mobile content, Content Sutra, which covers the Indian market. So those are the three main sites we have. And we're going to launch a UK site focused on the UK market, digital media market in the next couple of months. Is your plan to sort of build this thing out freestanding? Uh, do you think there's an opportunity to merge it? Um, what Everything is so global and huge. In a way you can publish from your, you know, uh, in your pajamas at home and you don't need a giant newsroom in London. Yeah. But what's, what's, what's the kind of the path the for you guys, do you think? It's a thought, meaning being part of a bigger company. Um, we have investors now, so we'll probably exit at some point in time. I don't think it's imminent by any means. Um, for me, the important part, whether we are independent uh, or we are part of a bigger company down the line, is we stay independent in terms of an operating unit, uh, in terms of editorial independence, as well as hopefully business uh, initiatives that we do, meaning things that we start, conferences that we launch. I don't want to. I don't want to be consumed by the internal politics of a big, big company where they don't pay enough attention to us. So that's the thing I want to avoid. So let's build it to a size where it becomes meaningful. Tell us uh, about the online video space, and you guys are covering that a lot. Uh, you don't have video too much video on the site yet. Uh, no, but. Uh, Tell us about what you think is interesting, and will the big media get it right? The big newspapers, they're, they're, you know, they're, some of them are more adventurous, and some of them are more in innovative. Um, there's obviously they're selling ads around. What's the opportunity for, well, for for newspaper publishers, first of all, and secondly, the broadcast networks? I think video as a discrete object, especially for news media companies. I'm not sure there's a huge opportunity of a video itself being a discrete object and now let's do something in online video. Video as part of the overall mix, audio, video, text, graphics, all the kind of stuff. Something like what I would say New York Times is doing is a, is a good example. I'm sure there, there are a lot of things that they want to do and, and a lot of things that they will do, but I think it's a good example where it's not a, here's the video ghetto and let's just go there and let's do that. I think for newspaper companies it has to become part of a mix. I mean a journalist who is covering a story, he or she should be proficient enough on the video audio things and and these days it doesn't really take a lot. I mean look at what you're doing. The video destination Juiced and YouTube and Babelgam and all the other sites, Vio and all the stuff. For them the I think what some of them are banking on exclusive relationships with these TV networks. I think that's not going to work in the long run. TV networks, by definition, would want their content everywhere. So what terms Juiced will get today, Babelgum will get tomorrow, VO will get the day after. So I think, and it's the same in the music market. Online music market, this is how it happens. Whatever terms Apple f managed to get out of the labels, everybody else down the line got those those terms. Real networks got those terms, everybody else got those terms. So I think you'll see that happening on the video side in terms of the competitive advantage of a lot of distribution companies will not necessarily be there. YouTube is probably in a different situation because it's a, it's a, it's a numbers game because the biggest site out there, the biggest audience which is out there. You cover a lot of companies who are funded or on the private side. There's not much on the public side right now, but there's a lot of money out there. Uh, is it, does it surprise you about the money, the valuations, uh, you know, particularly in terms of the media side? And, and is, it, is it over the top? Is it a bubble? Is it uh, crazy? Tell us a little bit what your temperature is about valuations and fundings of smaller companies and in the so-called media related space. I would say a lot of foolish money is is in the game right now, especially on the venture side. 
um, copycat competitors, not just in the US but everywhere else, uh, are being funded. Um, basically, I mean, everybody knows it's built to flip. I mean, what's the that unless it becomes a huge thing like Facebook uh, or YouTube, what are the chances of, of, I mean, what other hope do they have? Their only hope is to get bought out. If you don't have any revenues, chances are you probably get a better valuation than if you have revenues. The reason why I say that is um, the valuations right now build on future hope. If you don't have a discernible, if you don't have any revenues now, meaning you don't have fixed path of, okay, so th these are the revenues and this is where it'll max at. And if you don't have any revenues, zero revenues, then your revenues are your imagination, whatever the imagination can figure out. So if the revenues are imagination down the line, the valuation is a multiple of that. So that's what YouTube got. It didn't get valuations based on the revenues we're making now. It was whatever arbitrary imagination people could think of.